Hey everyone, welcome back to, here let me clear that real quick, welcome back to another video on the Wreath Network on Try and Hack Me. Today we're going to be taking a look at Task 15, Pivoting with S-Shuttle. Finally, let's take a look at our last tool of this section, S-Shuttle. Uh, I've seen this also called SSH Shuttle or something similar like that. A lot of people just call it S-Shuttle just because it's easier to pronounce. This tool is quite different from the others we have covered so far. It doesn't perform a port forward, and the proxy it creates is nothing like the ones we've already seen. Instead, it uses an SSH connection to create a tunneled proxy that acts like a new interface. So, very cool. This is a very different tool, and this is a very good one to add to your repertoire just because it is so unique. In short, it simulates a VPN, allowing us to route our traffic through the proxy without the use of proxy chains or an equivalent. As it creates a tunnel through SSH, the secure shell, Anything we send through the tunnel is also encrypted, which is a really nice bonus, especially if you want to do some evasion that way. We use S-Shuttle entirely on our attacking machine, in much the same way we would SSH into a remote server. Whilst this sounds like an incredible upgrade, it's not without its drawbacks. For start, S-Shuttle only works on Linux targets. It, only, it also requires access to the compromised server via SSH, and Python also needs to be installed on the server. Usually not a big deal. Python is fairly common to find, especially in the wild. That said, with SSH access, it could theoretically be possible to upload a static copy of Python and work with that. These restrictions do somewhat limit the uses of S-Shuttle. However, when it, is, when it is an option, it tends to be a superb bet. First of all, we need to install S-Shuttle. On Kali, this is easy as, or this is as easy as using the apt path package manager, and I'm going to go ahead and do that right now just so that I have it. Install S shuttle, especially since this is a new copy of Kali that I'm using for this lab. And we'll press enter. Uh, if you press enter on those, uh, whichever one is the capital letter is the default option, and that's what it goes with. So you don't even have to type in Y or anything with those. Nice little tip to new. Uh, the base command for connecting to a server with S shuttle is as follows. So you have S shuttle dash R username at address so similar syntax to the ssh connection and then subnet so this is the subnet that you're going to be connecting to for that routing for example in our fictional 101010.x network with a compromised server at 101010.5 the command may look something like this s shuttle dash r user at 101010.5 and then you have the subnet itself which is 101010.0 slash 24 and again, that's just CIDR notation. It makes it nice and easy. We would then be asked for the user's password and the proxy would be established. Rather than specifying subnets, we could also use the dash capital N option, which attempts to determine them automatically based on the compromised server's own routing table. So S shuttle dash R username at address and then dash capital N, rather than having that subnet option at the end. Bear in mind that this might not always be successful though. A lot of times you do want to specify this manually just because it's more reliable. However, automatic is a good first bet. As with the previous tools, these commands could also be backgrounded by appending the ampersand symbol to the end. Well, that's great, but what happens if we don't have a user's password or the server only accepts key-based authentication? Unfortunately, a shuttle does not currently seem to have shorthand for specifying a private key to authenticate to the server with. That said, we can easily bypass this limitation uh, by using the dash dash SSH dash CMD switch. This switch allows us to specify what command gets executed by S shuttle when trying to authenticate with the compromised server. By default, this is simply SSH with no arguments. With the dash dash SSH dash CMD switch, we can pick a different command to execute for authentication say ssh dash i and then your key file that you actually have for example so when using key based authentication the final command looks something like this s shuttle dash r user at address of the compromised machine and then dash dash ssh dash cmd ssh dash i key file and then you put your subnet at the end so nice and easy pretty simple way that you can use that key file instead to use our example from before you can see that we're just replacing that with user at 10 10 10 5 and then specifying that we're using that private key that we've garnered already and then the subnet of 10 10 10.0 slash 24. 
Please note, when using S Shuttle, you may encounter an error that looks something like this. So the client is connected, client send disconnect broken pipe, client fatal server died with error code 255. This can occur when the compromised machine you're connecting to is part of a subnet you're attempting to gain access to. So for example, if we're connecting to 10.10.10.5 and trying to forward 10.10.10.0 uh, slash 24, then we would be including the compromised server in this newly uh, forwarded network or subnet, thus disrupting the connection and causing the tool to die. Essentially, we're trying to connect to something and we're telling it to connect to itself too in that. And the that's the same as taking an ethernet cable and plugging it into two different ports on the same switch. Uh, the switch tends to get very confused and that's a great way to take down a network. Not that you heard it from me. Don't ever do that. <laughs> uh, to get around this, we tell S shuttle to exclude the compromised server from the subnet range using the dash lowercase x switch. Also fun fact, uh, note on the switch thing that I just mentioned, uh, as far as the ethernet cable smart switches, we'll be able to determine that, hey, there's a loop here. Uh, a simple switch at maybe your house network might not be able to do that. It'll probably start freaking out. To use our earlier example, so talking about that exclusion switch again, getting back on track, uh, we can exclude the 10.10.10.5. So this won't freak out saying that, hey, the host that you're connecting to is part of this network. What do I do? Um, and this tells it, yeah, just ignore it. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. There we go. Uh, this will allow S shuttle to create a connection without disrupting itself. How would you use S shuttle to connect to 10, 10, 20 dot seven with the username of pwned wonderful username. Uh, that's not obvious at all in a pen test <laughs> and a subnet of 10, 10 dot zero dot one, uh, slash 16. This is going to be S shuttle dash R pwned again, wonderful username. And we're connecting to 10, 10, 20 dot seven. And then this is our subnet at the end, 10, 10, zero, one slash 16. Note, we don't need to exclude anything because we already have uh, we, the host that we're connecting to is not part of this network. So we can submit that. I'll put that over here as well so you guys can see it since it's a little bit longer than that box. What switch and argument would you use to tell S shuttle to use a key file called priv underscore key located in the current directory? This is going to be dash dash SSH dash CMD because we're specifying that, hey, we're not going to use the default SSH command SSH dash I priv underscore key because it's in the same directory that we're in. There we go. You are trying to use S shuttle to connect to 10, 10, 10, 20. You want to forward the 10, 10, 10 dot X uh, slash 24 range of IP addresses, but you're getting a broken pipe error. What switch and argument could you use to fix this error? That's going to be dash lowercase x, and then we're excluding that host that we're connecting to 10, 10, 10, 20, because we're saying, hey, we're already connected to this. You don't need to include yourself. And there we go. That's going to do it for tash, or task 15. Uh, I will see you guys in the next video for task 16, the conclusion for the pivoting section. But until then, happy hacking.